Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to have a quick discussion on how to implement default arguments when you're writing your own MATLAB functions. All right, so to set the stage for this, I've got a quick demonstration. Um, I've written myself a function you can see over here on the right. I call this thing plot shape underscore version A. And this is a pretty standard function. You can see it takes in three, or uh, excuse me, four input arguments. You give it a character array denoting what kind of shape you want to draw, an X and a Y location of where you want to center that shape, and then a fourth argument, which is like the size of this shape. Um, and what this function does is it will obviously plot the desired shape at that location using the specified parameters and it will also compute the area of that shape and return it. So as you can see right here, this is a pretty simple function that I've written. Let me scroll down a little so you can see. It just supports three different shapes. You can draw a circle, a square, or a triangle and it's going to compute the area and then it will plot that shape at the desired location. So just as an illustration of how this works, let me show you. I've got this uh, script over here on the left that will just call my custom function using different parameters. So I'm going to plot a circle, a square, and then a triangle at these different locations. So if I go ahead and run this script and call my function, it does, you know, as you would expect, it draws these shapes at the locations with the specified sizes um, and nothing fancy right now, right? Okay, so now let's take another step. Let's go ahead and suppose that we want to improve our function over here. So right now, I can only plot these shapes, but I can't specify things like what color do I want the outline to be or how thick I want the lines drawn. So to make an improvement on that, I've actually created a second version of this plot shape function. Let me go ahead and open it up here. I call this version B. And version B, this is exactly the same as version A. The only difference is that now you can also specify the color and the line width. Okay, so you can see it's very, very similar. The only difference now is down here when we draw the shape, I can also now pick the color I wanna draw and I can also go ahead and pick the line width and specify that. So again, these two functions are virtually identical. Just one of them takes more inputs than the other. And what I can now do is let me go ahead and redo this and let's go ahead and draw this using the second function. So in fact, I prepared all the code off screen so you don't have to watch me type it in. I'm just going to paste it in right here. So here you can see all I'm doing is now I'm defining these extra arguments like the color and the line width. And now I'm using version B of that function. In fact, maybe let me scooch this over so you can kind of see that now I'm calling version B, which has now all of these input arguments, right? It has the two additional input arguments of the, co of the color and the line width, okay? So now let's go ahead and run this script and it's gonna generate two plots. The first plot is using version A. And again, that's this one right here that we saw earlier. And now the second plot is, whoopsie, oh shoot, stretching this out. Oh. Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, I can try to make these the same size. I accidentally stretched them. But you get, the, you get the rough idea now, right? So the version B of the function, it's able to do everything version A was, but it has a couple of extra parameters in it, so it gives it a little bit more extra functionality. Now, although we've got extra functionality, the drawback of version B, right, is that you are actually asking the user of this function, they're going to have to specify all of these parameters, right? I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. They have to give you six input arguments in order for the function to work. In other words, you can't go ahead, like, suppose I wanted to draw this triangle, but I really didn't care what the line width was. I wanted to just be some default number. So for example, um, what if I wanted to do this? Let me comment out the line width there and I will go ahead and let me actually paste this underneath and I'll comment out this version and I'll delete this okay does everyone see what I'm doing down here what I would love to be able to do is say okay I know what shape I want I know the XY position I know the size and I know the color but I really don't care about the line width right I want that just to be some default value right now you can't do this if I try to run this this is gonna throw a hard error right down here and it's going to yell hey wait a second you can't do that down here because this function b version b oopsies sorry i accidentally clicked on the wrong thing and jammed them all in one pane let me go ahead and rearrange to get back where we were okay sorry here we are <laughs> okay what happens here is this function version b 
it has to have six input arguments, right? And it will not allow it to be called with only five because it has no idea of what value to use for line with, right? You didn't specify it. This is typically where a default argument is gonna come in, where I wanna be able to say, I wanna call this function, but I don't wanna to have to specify things like line widths. And again, this is what's referred to as a default argument in um, most programming languages. Now, if you do a quick Google search on default arguments in MATLAB functions, you're gonna see that a lot of people say that really there is not a uh, built-in methodology to support this within MATLAB. But um, I don't know if I really agree with this. Th there are very easy ways to deal with this. For example, if you look down here, um, in fact, this is what we're gonna do right now. I would like to talk about using nargin and vargargin to basically uh, replicate the functionality of default arguments. So to do that, let's come back to the MATLAB script uh, or MATLAB IDE and let me pull up a third version of this function. Okay, let me drag it over here and you can see. Okay, here is my plot shape version three. Okay, now what this does is, in fact, maybe what would be more helpful is let me put this side by side with some of these other ones. Let me put version B maybe on this side. Let me get us a little bit more room so we can compare these all together. Okay, so version B is over here on the left and now I've got the same function version C, it's a light, slightly different, but what this is gonna allow me to do is, notice what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect all of these input arguments right here, and instead of explicitly listing out all six of these inputs, I'm gonna use this special function in MATLAB called vargargin, okay? And if you go ahead and do a little help on vargargin, it stands for variable number of uh, arguments going into the function. So what this is doing is it's basically going to allow us to collect a varying number of input arguments that are passed into the function. It's gonna be passed into this function into this cell array. This is basically gonna be a large cell array which is gonna collect all of the different inputs, okay? And now what we're gonna do is the very first thing that I usually do as soon as I drop into the function is I use a switch statement and I'm gonna use this other matching kind of associated sister function called nargin, which stands for number of arguments in. And again, let's go ahead and do a little help on nargin. And you'll see that what this does is it's going to tell you how many function inputs did the user call the function with, okay? So by default, we see that six is the maximum number that we wanna support. So let's assume that the user passes in six arguments. What we're gonna drop down here in this case statement is we're gonna say, okay, that meant the user specified absolutely all of the input arguments. So what I'm gonna then do is I'm gonna unpack this varg arg in uh, cell array. The first element of the cell array, it's going to be the first input argument, which is gonna be shape. The second element of the cell array is gonna be the second uh, input argument, which in this case is X, Y, and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Y, size, color, line width, right? So all six of these inputs are going to be packed into the function, into this cell array varg arg in, okay? Now, the next case is, okay, this is where it gets interesting. What if the user only passed in five input arguments? This is exactly the case that we were trying to do over here on line 57 right? There were only five input arguments, right? We had omitted the line width argument. So there were only five inputs. So we're really asking, you know, the, the intended behavior that the user wants is they want to call the function. They want to specify only the first five input arguments, and they want to just use a default argument for the sixth input. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to unpack the first five uh, input arguments, these were specified by the user just like we saw earlier. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify a default line width. This is the default sixth piece of information that we were missing. Let's just use a line width of one, right? And you can actually keep going with this, right? What if the user only passed in four input arguments, right? So what that means is they're only gonna specify these four inputs, they're gonna want a default color and a default line width. So again, we just do that, right? We only unpack the information the user has, then we're gonna pick a default color. In this case, it's uh, what was it? red, green, blue. So we're just gonna use blue 
and a line width of one. And again, you can see how this works, right? You can use this logic here, the switch statement. Let's do one last one and assume the user only passes in three inputs, right? Size X or uh, shape X and Y. In that case, let's just use a size shape of, of unity for, for, for fun, right? As a default argument. And then after we do all this unpacking and setting of all of these default arguments, the function body, it's exactly the same as version B, right? In fact, if we line these two up, maybe we can do this like that, right? So on the left is the version B, on the right is version C. You can see they're the exact same. Oh, the only magic that happened in version C is that we had all of this handling at the initial inception or initial uh, top level of the function to unpack all of the user inputs. So what we can now do is let's go ahead and reset all of this. Let me go uncomment that. Okay, so let's let's make sure. Yep, this should be back to using version B. Now what we can do is let's call version C and what version C is going to allow us to do it. And again, let me paste this in just so you don't have to watch me type it all the time. And let me get us a little bit more space. Okay. So now version C, I'm going to start another figure. And now I can do all of this fun stuff that we did earlier. For example, we saw I can call it with only three arguments. So what we expect right now is this is going to draw a circle, but it's going to use a size of one a blue color and a line width of one, right? Because those are the default arguments. If I don't specify it, I want the function to be able to just use default values. And then again, let's plot a square. But this time, maybe I will use four user specified parameters and two default arguments. So that is going to be covered by this case right here. OK, and then same thing. You still could use the full on version of the function uh, if you want. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, this should be version C. Whoops, little typo there. But anyway, yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So every single parameter of the triangle is specified. Um, and now if I run this, now we should have no problem. So for example, again, here's the version A, right? Here's version B of the function. And finally, version C here is you can see it draws the circle using a, a blue size one with one line. And then down here, the square is, yes, the, sh the shape, the location, and the size are specified. But the um, color and the line width are default. Yep, so we see blue. And then again, the triangle you can see has everything specified and everything works. So again, this is actually pretty fun. So it's it's interesting that what you're doing is we are, again, using this fun thing called varg arg in and its sister matching function n arg in to um, allow a user to specify multiple different um, number of input arguments and how it's going to behave. And while we're talking about all of these variable number of f uh, input arguments, you know, you can also have a variable number of output arguments. Notice right now that the function is only being uh, asked to output one output, the area of the shape, right? And you can see that's exactly what we're asking for here. So if I were to come and do something like, uh, let me go and paste this. Uh, actually, you know, let's, let's do this one so we can see this a little bit better. OK, I'm going to put a little uh, comment here, demo multiple output arguments. OK, so if I do something like this, like, um, I don't know, how about like output two, something like this, this line 70 is going to throw another error because it says, wait a second, this function here, it only spits out one output argument, right? But the user is asking for two output arguments. There's a mismatch. This is exactly what we saw earlier with the number of inputs. So you can actually do a very similar thing on the output side. So if I look at var arg out, right? This is how you can get multiple arguments coming out of a function. So again, the way you could do this is I can say, I'll replace this A with a var arg out, okay? And then what I will do is down at the bottom, Let's go ahead and say, I'm going to package the variable number of outputs. So what I could do is I could say var arg out one, right? As a cell array, that's going to be the area. That's the first thing that a user might want. But maybe var arg out 
two. I don't know. We're gonna make up some other second output. Let's uh here. Let, let let's let's do this up here. So I'm going to make up some arbitrary output uh, or second output. Um, I don't know what we could do. Let's make it. Uh, I'm gonna say output uh, alternate. Let's just go ahead and make this something like the area squared, right? I'm just making something up, okay? So now what I'll do is I'll put that out as a secondary output, okay? So now what the function can do is the function can output one or two outputs. It doesn't matter. So now if I do this and I run this script, this will all work. All the code above, like all of these are still working, right? It's saying, okay, the user just wants one output, one output, one output. Oh, now the user wants two outputs. So actually this should work. So if I look at the area of the circle, that's 3.14. And now the output there, it's that area squared. So there you go. So this is how you can now get an arbitrary number of input arguments into a function and an arbitrary number of output arguments out of a function. And what you can see is this is used all over in MATLAB. So if you look up some random function, in fact, let's look up the rand function in MATLAB and you'll notice, right, a lot of MATLAB functions, there are multiple ways you can call this, right? So for example, you can call it with just a single number here. You can call it with a whole bunch of extra parameters here and you can use this if you want to emulate this functionality in your own custom functions it's just using the varg arg in varg arg out n arg in you, th there's actually n arg out <laughs> if you want n arg out right so this is a great way to go about uh, writing your own custom functions that can implement implement default argument behavior as well as multiple or variable number of outputs now, this is just one way to skin this cat. In fact, in some of our future videos, we're gonna look at different ways you can do this, which include things like validating the uh, structure and the type and the values of all of the input arguments, as well as allowing you to pass them in in different orders. But I think that's, uh, that's a topic for another discussion. So with that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. I hope this was helpful. If so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you do that, it really helps the channel grow. And the new videos come out every Monday. So I hope I'll be able to catch you at a future discussion and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'm going to sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.